morning. We want to continue our look at Paul's thinking about what God has done for us in Christ Jesus, talking about the eternal. We're looking at the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. So let's just read them again this morning as we begin. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace, which he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. This morning, we just want to look at one verse. And it's verse 6. It says, To the praise of his glorious grace, which is freely given us in the one he loves. And we need, and I just want to look at it kind of backwards. In the one he loves. Really an important thought to us this morning. The text helps us understand God's grace. Listen to Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17, verse 24, 25. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, that they may see the glory you gave me before, but well, pardon me, that they may see the glory you gave me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, although the world has not known you, I know you, and they know you that you sent me. I have made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love you have for me may be in them and I in them. Beautiful portion of scripture when you think about it. Jesus is praying for us in our relationship to the Father. We have been made accepted in the beloved by grace because he has first loved Jesus, Jesus who is the love, loved one. Think of Matthew um, we think of Matthew chapter 17, uh, pardon me, chapter 3, verse 17. His beloved son in whom he is well pleased is the verse that tells us connection with love. That love that is eternal, that love that is without blemish, without hypocrisy, without merit, without 
any kind of attachment of I'll love you if you just loved. Love because he loved. And we see that that God's love is tied to his grace. His grace that is shown by our adoption as sons, as children of God. Grace, that unmerited favor of God. That grace that permeates everything that God does. In fact, it's rather unique that God has shown us that grace extended to us way back in the Old Testament. Chapter 33 and 34 of Exodus. Where Moses' request is, God, show me your glory, your presence, who you are, what you're like. And that's reflected in Jesus' prayer in John 17. That we would see that glory. Jesus said, I have made that glory known. I have shown them you. In fact, Paul would later write and tell us that to look in the face of God is to see Jesus. Jesus is the face of God. And so God's response to show me thy glory in Exodus 33, the answer was, I will make my goodness to pass before you and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And in chapter 34, verses 5 through 7, we have that event taking place, that God per pronounced his name, the Lord, the Lord, the glorious and gracious God. And he caused his goodness to pass before him. Goodness and grace are synonymous to each other. They express God's heart towards us. And I kind of like that. We don't have a God who wants to put us off. No, we have a God who says to you and me, I would that all should be saved. And that none should perish. That's his goodness. That's his grace. That's his mind. That's his will. That none should be. And we have been extended the privilege of stepping into that grace. And he has bestowed it upon us. In fact, the next verse says that it's lavished on us. I'm going to talk about that next week, talking about the grace that's lavished on us. Because there's a number of scriptures that deal with that whole picture of the amount that we're talking about. We're not talking about a cup half full. We're talking about a cup that overflows. And so we need to, to allow that to permeate our hearts and our minds, God's love for us. I like what it says. He's bestowed grace upon. In other words, it's ours by virtue of him giving it to us. It's bestowed. I didn't earn it. And I can't earn it. And I can't do things in order to keep it because it's bestowed. It comes only from the Father to me. It's the gift. Think of the prodigal son. As he makes his way home and he is met by the Father who embraces him because that's the picture here. 
that Paul has in mind, the embracement of God bestowing. And he covers up the son's shame. He covers up the son's sin. He covers up the son's fear with love. He covers up, which is abhorrent to everyone else. He covers it up by enfolding his arms around him and literally pulling him into his heart and into his breast. Those who would be coming behind the father, the servants coming behind would lose sight of the son in the father's embrace. Think of that a moment, because that's what Paul is saying. That the Father has embraced us. He's bestowed it on us. So that all that is seen is him. And we are hidden in Christ, in God, as Paul would say in Colossians 3.1. What a beautiful picture. And it's all happened before the creation of the world. That God's plan and purpose toward us, that is that we would become recipients of his marvelous grace, which he has bestowed upon us in his son whom he loves. It's all found in Christ. I love that song that Stuart Townsend wrote, In Christ alone my hope is found. He, he is my shield. He is my strong tower. He is the one who hides me in his heart. May these words of encouragement be yours today. God is not looking for you to do something to please him. What he's looking for is your heart to receive what he's already bestowed and receive it as a free gift to you. Can you receive that? Don't let the enemy of your soul steal you, steal from you the joy that is yours in Christ. Yes, in this world, we will have troubles. But these words should bring us hope and peace in the midst of our trials and our tribulations, in the midst of our troubles and our struggles, knowing that This is only temporary and it will pass away. But as Paul writes in Corinthians, that which is unseen will be present for eternity. And this is what's the unseen. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely bestowed upon us in the one he loves. Let Jesus love you today. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the grace that can be ours today for the asking. Help us to come with that repentant heart, that change of mind to allow you to be Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus that you've made this possible, that we have gained access to the heavenlies and to the Father's throne by your shed blood. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you.